A few days ago, Ultra Kill dropped a behemoth of an update, arming us with some shiny new boomsticks and the new brutal difficulty. And boy oh boy, it sure lives up to its name. Today we'll be checking out just how brutal it really is. Oh, and we're P-ranking every level, including Prime Souls. That means perfect runs only. Swift, stylish, and absolutely slaughterous. Taiwan's back to the start. No ifs, ands, or buts. They suggest bringing a full arsenal? Oh, we'll bring it, alright. The first room with Ultra Kill's brutal difficulty sets the tone. No more hand holding, no more easy kills. The filth are low level at other enemies, have graduated from near nuisances to full blown menaces. Normally, these guys just shuffle towards you on the ground. Easy targets for explosives. Well, not anymore. They're hyper, they're jumpy, and they've got a new trick. They leap across gaps like they're auditioning for the Monster Olympics. Now scattered and more aggressive, grouping them up for a quick explosive takedown is a thing of the past. They're like the worst kind of party guests. They get everywhere, they're a pain to corral, and they demand your attention non-stop. Still, with a bit of timing and a lot of bullets, you can take them on clusters. Just catch them before they start their aerial antics. When it comes to strays, these guys are in big baddies, but underestimate them at your peril. Their attacks come faster and more aggressively, a trend that we'll see a lot of in this difficulty. At the end of the level, we meet our first malicious face. And boy, these guys are mad. They fire more erratically now, making their shots spread out and unpredictable. You might think, hey, less accuracy means easier to dodge, right? Wrong. The erratic firing patterns mean you gotta be on your toes constantly, dodging like your life depends on it. Because it does. Bye bye, Morris. Despite the beefed up bad guys, we nailed it first try. Awesome. This level is a step up in difficulty. More filth, more strays. But man, look at this. Even a single filth can destroy your health bar when you're not paying attention. I think now is a good time to talk about the marksman coins. With enemies zigzagging all over the place like they just snorted a line of sugar, these coins are your sniper lead badge. Pop a filth from across the room? Check. Interrupt a stray mid-charge? Double check. Coins become even more indispensable than before. They're just that good. Here's where the fun really starts. Enter the schisms. Same old tricks, just a bit more threatening. But the real highlight is the revamped Swords Machine. Imagine a blender with legs and a vendetta, and you've got this guy. Faster, meaner, and just itching for a reason to go ballistic. And when you parry its attacks, it throws a tantrum that makes it feel like I'm reliving Melania's fight over here. Keep your dashes on point unless you want to get chopped out by the scrap metal. This is honestly one of my favorite brutal enemies. Now Malicious Faces have been introduced as a normal enemy. But more important than that, I think this level serves as a great example of just how annoying and deadly filth become. They get everywhere, and they're relentless. I mean look at this, bro is just hanging out. Oh shit! They weren't kidding, you really have to stay on high alert here. Ah, the Cerberus. Just when you think you've got a handle on brutal difficulty, these guys come charging in to check on your ego. Okay then. Cerberi have been juiced up significantly in this difficulty. Their attack patterns? Faster. But their attacks are much deadlier too. Their stomps now feature a double shockwave that spreads misery in two general helpings. And their dashes? They have two of them now. This attack in particular was the hardest for me to get used to, since it makes them way more dangerous on the ground. And where there are two of them in a tiny room? Oh boy, you can imagine the carnage. I sure am glad there isn't a level in the game with four of them in a small room later on. <sighs> P-ranking that sure will be fun, can't wait. This was the first level that ground us into the dirt. Maybe we need some new strategies. Oh yeah, this is the full arsenal update. Let's check out our new toys. First we got the sawed on shotgun. You literally shoot out a freaking chainsaw that tears through whatever it hits for a second before coming back. And you can keep reusing it by punching it once it comes back. If you miss the punch, it'll go on cooldown. But if you don't, you can just keep using the damn thing. Awesome! And let's take a look at the jumpstart nail gun. You can shoot at a cable that charges a big electric shock. But the thing is, once it connects to an enemy, you can just switch to another weapon, and the cable will remain attached, slowly charging until it explodes in a huge electric shock dealing some really good damage to the target, and whoever was unlucky enough to be around them. But despite the shiny new toys, the age-old technique of railcoining remains king. <sighs> the 
sweet sound of efficiency. But with all this firepower, the dual Cerberus threat can still be tough to deal with. I ended up relying on the ground slams to constantly stay high up in the air, so we can stay out of reach from their dash and stomp attacks. The main threat is when they go ballin', but as long as you keep your eyes open and your reflexes sharp, they're manageable. I love this level. It's here that we're introduced to the drones. You want to talk about agile enemies? These guys are it. These acrobats are all about agility. Dodging, weaving, and firing from a distance. They can be quite annoying if you have other threats around, so your best bet is with coins. One single coin shot is enough to turn them into fireworks. No coins, no problem. A charge shot does the trick. Rockets are an option too, but these guys have some quick moves, and rockets can often miss. If you thought drones were fun, wait till you meet the street cleaners. These brutes have gotten an upgrade. The incredible, unbeatable smoke particles. They might look faster, but their dance hasn't changed much. A charge shot or a coin flip to their backside sends them to the scrapyard just as effectively as before. Here's a tip that cost me a few retries, because I kept getting A rank on kills. You gotta resist the urge to rocket straight through the door. That's a rookie mistake. Take it slow. Hop your way up platform by platform. There's a trigger on one of the mid-level platforms that spawns a few more enemies, essential for that prized P rank. Here's where every enemy you've dreaded and every strategy you've honed will be put to the test. It's a long level with some pretty unforgiving rooms, mixing many of the freshly improved enemies. Consider this the entrance to the big leagues. The difficulty spike here is real, and it's here to stay. You can find a blood orb which will bring your health up to 200, and once you beat all the enemies, all that remains is the level's boss, the hideous mess. It's as nasty as they come. Its stinger attacks is fast and furious, giving you barely a blink to react. You dodge late and you're toast. And while it thankfully doesn't have the Cerberus double shockwave, it compensates with sheer aggression. As always, the real danger is when it's not alone. If you're caught by the hideous mass while other enemies are around, you might as well start putting your next attempt, because it's usually a one-way ticket to the <laughs> Boy oh boy oh boy, now this is a fight. You thought B2 was already quick enough? In brutal difficulty, it's fast, relentless, and oh so very deadly. Your movement needs to be just as quick and nimble, and your aim needs to be on point. It's a barrage of aggression that will test the limits of your reflexes and accuracy. This really is one of those get good fights, but even then, I can still give a bit of advice. Your dash is a precious resource, so sliding is a very good option for dodging a lot of attacks without wasting your dashes. For the boss itself, B2 is small, fast, and infuriatingly agile. Landing shots in it consistently can be quite a challenge. If your aim is not laser precise, let the coins do the heavy lifting. Paired with a rail cannon, they're your best shot at taking down this mechanical menace efficiently. But the most important thing is to always keep moving. Be just as nimble as your opponent. It's an intense fight that really does not justice to V2, and you need to be right up there with it if you want to win. And no, I'm not gonna cheese it, I have integrity.
And thus, we enter the Lost Layer. This level serves as our gateway into this new land. And thankfully, it's a bit of a breather compared to the heart-stopping thrill of the previous levels. This level is a visual masterpiece, with an eye-catching battlefield. It took me a few tries to snag that ass rank got kills. Apparently, a couple of elusive enemies thought they could dodge their fate. But no dice. Eventually, persistence paid off in a relatively calm and collected intro to what promises to be an intense layer. If you thought Bridge Burner was a scroll through a particularly stunning park, death at 20,000 volts cranks up the voltage. Literally. This level introduces the soldiers. And they're not just run of the mill grunts. Faster, more aggressive, and now with a brand new trick up their sleeve. They can roll! Yeah, these guys will tuck and roll right out of your line of fire, approaching you with a Dark Souls level of evasion. These little dudes can be a serious menace if not dealt with properly. Long range engagements work best, as their rolling antics are less problematic from afar. They're adept at blocking projectiles, making their revolver or your trusty coins the tools of choice for piercing their defenses. Shotguns can be effective too, but you'll need to be quick on the draw, as they won't hesitate to roll out of harm's way. Despite the uptick in difficulty from Bridge Burner, this level is a thrilling challenge that tests your reflexes and adaptability, but doesn't overwhelm. Here you'll find more soldiers, more fills, and the introduction of mind players, the waifu of choice for ultra kill fans that don't like Gabriel. You know, all three of them. The mind players haven't strayed too far from their violent difficulty antics, aside from a notable uptick in speed and aggression. They still remain one of the top runners. If one is present, then it's time to focus up, but manage them well, and they're just as comfortable as any other foe. Reaching the end of the last layer, it's time to make King Minas. Or, well, what's left of him, at least. Initially, we're just dealing with his hand. And it's faster than usual, but it sticks to a predictable pattern. It's a good warm-up for what's coming next. Once we meet him, however, King Minas opts for a more straightforward punch. Punch. Which, yeah, if you know how to parry, he goes down very quickly. It seems a little monotonous, but it's still a step up, and while it's not the toughest fight, even on brutal difficulty, the increased aggression and speed serve to keep you on your toes. It's an apt end to the last layer. Not overwhelming, but just a test of your parrying skills. We've made it to the gluttony layer, and it's not getting any easier. This level is a big test of everything we've mastered so far. Go into the first room, a mind flayer, some enemies, and a Cerberus. Nothing too bad. It's almost comedic how the enemies explode when they touch the acid. Body parts everywhere. It's like a grotesque fireworks show. Yes, I find that amusing. I'm perfectly normal, I promise. I love this room, by the way. You can immediately rail coin two Cerberi and kill them instantly. They're already dead by the time the third one knows what's going on. The rest of the level has some increased difficulty with their toughened enemies. It gave me a little bit of trouble, but overall wasn't too bad. A nice warm up for the upcoming fight. Finally, it's time to meet the Judge of Hell. Oh shut it, Gabriel. I'm here for the showdown, not the sermon. Let's skip the chit chat and get right into the good stuff. I mean, no, like, let's have a good time. That, not like that. Like, what I mean is, like, when you. Yeah, that. 
Let's see what you've got, wink boy. Gabriel, the so-called judge of hell, doesn't pull any punches. He's swift and merciless. The fight is much faster than before. He's definitely a lot easier to hit than V2, but it doesn't mean he's a pushover. While V2 could jump all over the place, Gabriel isn't too concerned with dodging and more so with slicing you into scrap. With the rapid sword slashes that can end you in seconds if you're not on your toes dodging and weaving through his divine onslaught. Keep up the pressure on him and use whatever little openings he has to strike. ranked all of Act 1. Now there's just one more thing to do in order to truly claim Act 1. Let's go back to Belly of the Beast, kill these dudes, frail coin these goobers, and jump this gap. Now with all the main Act 1 levels P ranked, we get to see a real boss. This is something I'm very excited about. I've been waiting for this. Let's go. The Flesh Prison is now a max security prison. It's been upgraded with extra speed and what seems like an army of minions, all turbocharged and raring to disrupt. But no worries, a classic old nuke clears the field effectively. Ironically, this cage of flesh gives me more trouble than the actual boss lurking inside. Go figure. I've been looking forward to this. Minas gave me so much trouble when I first tried it. Let's see if this brutal difficulty it really lives up to the hype. Free at last. Oh, Gabriel. Now dawns thy reckoning, and thy gore shall glisten before the temples of man. Creature of steel, my gratitude upon thee for my freedom. But the crimes thy kind have committed against humanity are not forgotten. And thy punishment is death. Minus Prime doesn't bother with new tricks, he doesn't need them. His speed alone is a brutal upgrade. For those daredevils playing on Radiance level 10, yeah, this is a cakewalk for you maniacs. Parrying his blows is crucial as always, since you can simultaneously dish out big damage and regain health, keeping you in the fight both offensively and defensively. Up Judgment. here, up Die. there, and Minus falls swiftly. Give me my children. 
For I have failed to bring you salvation for this cold, dark world. That was certainly something. All of Act 1. I'm sure I'm glad I didn't miss anything. Huh? Secret levels? What secret levels? Ah, oh, fuck.